Thank you very much, Miss Melissa Felipe and the musicians for bringing that to us this morning. That's a, a wonderful message. Uh, because it, it so very much captures one of the central attitudes of our Center for Spiritual Living, that we, we live in a, a world of infinite possibilities, which is so important to keep in mind, especially if you find yourself um, believing what you're thinking, you know, and, you, and you've... <laughs> You've been thinking it for a while, and you think that that's how it is, and so you might as well just give that up, because it's not how it is. So especially when we deal with the topics like we are dealing with, communication and speaking and hearing, um, because it's very easy to think along the lines you've always thought, then you don't discover anything new. And so I, I've been tremendously inspired about this um, May focus of healthy communication because I notice how easy it is for me to go back to what I've already thought such a, a long, long time, and then there's nothing new. Then you get more of the same. And so I've been enjoying taking um, how we listen interpersonally and speak to each other human to human and comparing that to how we do that on a spiritual plane and learning so much. Because, you know, that can happen when you compare two things that are not exactly similar. Suddenly a new life can be um, birthed through the comparison. So that's what we've been doing. Last week we started with how do I listen and this week it's how do I speak, which clearly two sides of the same coin and if both are not present, then you don't have balance. Got to have listening and speaking. And what we talked about last week was how for some of us it seems to be easier to do the speaking part. Yes? We just talked about that a little bit. A few of us identify with that. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's not so bad because we also learned that you can, you can learn how to be more present for listening. You can learn some active listening skills. And the thing is, as you learn skills um, in the outer world, how to listen, then it can also teach you how to learn to listen in the inner world. Um, for example, I was thinking back to the time when I was studying to be a practitioner and the um, active listening skills that they taught us were so powerful. And this is very practical because if you're going to be spending time with your mother, then you can just use her to experiment on this afternoon. Or if you're a mother going with your children, just use this on your children and see what a fantastic day it produces. Because active listening skills involve these three attitudes. First of all, um, be broad, and then um, be open, and then be inquisitive. So I'll be precise with how that goes. Be broad means um, ask people questions that cannot be answered with yes or no. So instead of saying to them, do you like ice cream? which is kind of a dead-end conversation, you can say, ask them, um, and then what did you do next? <laughs> do you see what I mean? And then the second part of that, that's being broad, then being open, is to really be open to the other person's experience, to really be open by inviting it, asking them for their opinion. What do you think about this lunch? Asking them for their dreams, asking them for their ideas. And then the last part, be inquisitive, means remaining open, really paying attention to what you haven't heard before. Because it's there. It's right there. Now, if you take this little active listening skill set and you apply it to spirituality sitting in a contemplative state of mind being broad being open being inquisitive you can get a whole lot out of it because then you can think of being broad means um, don't just be focused on your particular problem you know I'm gonna meditate on this problem instead it's as if you address Spirit, like it's a, a wise counselor within you, and say, tell me about relationship. And then you're open to, let's say, its opinion. You, you might even say, tell me, spirit within, what is the highest idea you have about relationship? And then you remain inquisitive. You let rise up something that you haven't thought before. Isn't that great? Just from looking out, you can look in. So obviously, if... Um, if listening is sitting in a meditative, com contemplative state, then speaking is like prayer. 
So all we have to do is look around and see how do I speak? How do we speak? And from that we can learn how to pray. So I've been thinking about that. And I particularly gave attention to some of the unsuccessful speaking strategies I have used. And they all kind of fit generally into the category of unconscious speaking. Which sometimes includes talking at somebody. Or talking with an, a hidden agenda, a motive that's not clean. Now, maybe I don't even have to explain this to you. Maybe you already got it. You know what I'm talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Nevertheless, I'm going to explore it anyway. Because <laughs> I find, you know what I find is um, that these skills are not tremendously effective in interpersonal communication, so they're probably not effective in prayer. So I'm going to just say that that's the theme for today. I'm just going to take it for granted that um, whatever doesn't work between people, it's probably not such a good idea to do it in prayer. So let's start looking at unconscious speaking. Unconscious speaking would be the kind of speaking that has no care about the impact of the speaking. I'm just going to say whatever I like because I'm a spiritual being and I'm just telling the truth. It also includes, because it's unconscious, unnecessary speaking. (laughs) Oh, Lordy. Because, you know, some things are better left unsaid. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. You know, I'm not talking about the different styles of speaking, but some of us are introverts and some of us are extroverts. Some of us process by speaking a lot out there, you know, in stream of consciousness until we get it all figured out, then we know. Others of us sit and think about You know, I was with Reverend Chris Michaels for the last three days, and we were writing the journal for 2010 that's coming out. And he is so funny because he he processes externally. So he asks me a question, and then I go in, and I go, and all the thoughts, you know. And then he's sitting there, and he's getting so frustrated. And he said, you know all of that stuff that's going on in there? Bring it out. Say something. Say something. (laughs) So I'm not talking about different styles of speaking. I'm talking about speaking when it is uncaring, when you don't care. Which shows up sometimes in in that style of talking at somebody. You know, maybe you've experienced that when somebody is really urgent about getting heard. And you have the feeling that they're talking at you and you're only marginally interested in what they're saying. And so they start to speak louder or faster or because it's an idea they really want to get across. They cover more and more of the details and you can just feel yourself being oppressed by the sharing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not aware, are they, that the other person exists. You know, I called a major telephone company just the other day because I was looking at my bill and I noticed for a whole year they had been charging me for a service that I wasn't using. So I called them up and explained my position and they said, you know, sorry, sir, but it's the customer's responsibility. You're supposed to tell us that you're not using this. And as I went into it, blah, 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 that I could hear I was not going to win this one. I was not going to get it. Sorry, sir, it's not going to happen. And so as I was getting frustrated and getting close to closing it up, the agent says, but by the way, sir, can I interest you in a digital camera that our company is producing? (laughs) And I said to myself, you have got to be kidding. (laughs) And I, I just realized in that moment that I did not exist for that agent. She was just talking at, just like that. Have you experienced that? And you know, being talked at can have the flavor of being bullied, and it can come in any.